On today's show, we're going to be talking to Jason McCurry, a photographer who has shot the Aurora Borealis quite a bit and is already for the eclipse. We're going to talk about what he's done to prep for that and what you can do to prep for it too. Today's show is also brought to us by Fidonet.com. We'll hear more about them in just a moment. Welcome everybody to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live daily show on YouTube every weekday morning, 9.30 a.m. Pacific on photography, on video. I like mixing up the order there because then I have no idea what's coming next and you know, that makes it more fun for everybody. Oh boy. So, howdy. We are talking to a special guest today. This is uh, unusual. I don't usually do a guest call in for this show, but this is one of those occasions where he's, uh, he couldn't come into town here to do this with me, sit in the studio with me, so we're doing it remotely. And it's gonna work out just fine because we're gonna be talking about his photography, talk about shooting around the Aurora Borealis, shooting star clusters, beautiful, beautiful images like that, and of course talking about the eclipses coming up. Before we do that though, I do wanna thank our, get, our, our uh, hosts, our sponsors, that's the word I was looking for, phytonet.com, they are fantastic. Fantastic. They are they are the host that you want, the host with the most. Can we say that? Why not? Hey, Ryan, could you bring me my phone too? I just realized I don't even have my notes here. Little things like that. We'll do a proper ad read for them later. So, John, don't worry. We'll get you going. <laughs> you know how it is. But let's just get let's get our guest on the show because that is what this one is all about. It's going to make this a lot more fun. So, Jason, welcome to the show. You're on What's the going air. on, guys? It's good to see you on here. So, Jason, you are, uh, first of all, I know you through my through the film organization that we're both members of called SOFAM, Southern Oregon Film right. and Media. You are a filmmaker slash photographer slash IT guy, kind of all over the place. Give us just a, a little bit of your background here for uh, for our audience. Uh, well, in terms of IT, that's, uh, you know, that's my day job until I can actually make everything else pay for itself. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I've been doing that for a very, very long time. Okay. And so, but in terms of photography and everything, um, I've always had an interest, but I just never like took the leap into it. And a few years back, I just said, screw it. So I just went for it. And, uh, you know, I, I, I actually, uh, enrolled with uh, full cell university Oh wow! and yeah, the, their, uh, digital cinematography program, which they're expensive, but you know, they sent me gear, which I mean, I obviously I got to pay for it, but sure, sure. I was able to kind of get things started with that because I couldn't afford the gear outright. That's really cool. So Full Sail, I, there, that's a university in Florida, right? But is this an online, Correct. based on an online program that you're doing through them? That program was an online program, yeah. Oh. I graduated actually a couple years ago. Okay, that's cool. I don't, think I, I don't think I was aware that they did an online program. That's really interesting. I've been to their university. It's, uh, it's quite, a, quite a facility. Yeah, um, I actually, I flew out for my graduation. <laughs> nice. That was so the was only just, time you got to see it was a graduation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, that's how it goes. Well, cool. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. That is uh, that's really neat. I didn't know that about you. Okay, so we're we're here talking today specifically about some of your photography, nighttime photography, uh, including things like the Milky Way, just general star fields, and of course, Aurora Borealis, which is what started this whole thing. So this is the photo that started our conversation. John, and, uh, Jason and I were at a SOFAM meeting together and he just showed me, hey, let's check out the shot that I did. And I was like, whoa, my God, this is incredible. I have no idea how to do that type of photography. It's just completely outside of my, um, outside of my scope of experience. And I said, would you come on the show and talk about how you did this? Because I just, I don't even know where to start. Is this, is this one photo that's shot just right? Is it a, a half a dozen photos comped together? What went into this? And so, uh, so he said, sure. And that was a while ago. And by the time we got this scheduled, the eclipse is suddenly around the corner and he tells me that he's preparing for the eclipse. And so that became a, a almost more important part of this. But I think before we get into the discussion about how to shoot the eclipse, which I also don't know anything about. We're gonna take a look at these photos and talk about what went into these just so people can kind of understand a little bit more of his background and his approach to photography. So sure. give us just a, a be, no technical details, just this photo. Tell us a little bit of the background of this image right here. Well, that's one shot. Wow. Um, I, I'm not against composites, I'm not against blending, anything like that. And I've tinkered a little with um, you know, some HDR, this and that. And I'm interested in trying some of the other stuff too, but I like one shot. Okay. You know, I mean, uh, you know, it, what happens a lot is you'll see like this amazing photo and you're just like, wow. And then you're like, and, and someone will sit there and it's like, oh, hey, check out my photo. Right. You know, <laughs> and it's like, okay, well, that was comprised of like, say, five, right. eight it's different a images. Yeah. And it's, 
it changes its definition, in my opinion. Sure, sure. And, then, you know, nothing wrong with either way. And it's no. not one way or another isn't better or worse. Right. But, right, if your approach to it is you want a more purist, just straight up photography and not the compositing, then obviously the compositing doesn't uh, doesn't fall into that place. So, okay, right. so this image, it's a single shot. Where is this taken? Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. So this, where is this shot us. taken? That's at Crater Lake National Park here in Oregon. Um, not too far, actually, from my house in Klamath Falls. Um, and, you know, we, we got the uh, – me and a couple of friends went up there, and I got some information. Uh, you know, we uh, – space weather and stuff. And you can get that information from, like, spaceweather.com. Okay. Uh, NOAA. NOAA is a good resource for that. Sure. So, you know, we kind of kept an eye on it. And funny enough, um, that night I was really debating on even going. Oh, wow. And I turned around. I'm like, you know what? Sometimes you just got to go. You and so, it, yeah. yeah, I went and uh, a couple of friends went with us. Uh, went, You know, we all kind of carpooled up there. And and I'm really glad I went. <laughs> yeah, because that was that So was what like time of year best. is this? Is, is Aurora Borealis something that can happen any time of year? Or is this like a winter, summer, fall, spring type of thing? Uh, it can actually happen almost any time. Okay. It kind of comes down to uh, solar flares and uh, you know various bursts that come out of the sun. Okay. So it's a matter of keeping an eye on that and crossing your fingers. Sometimes you know with this kind of photography, you, you'll go out and you'll come back with nothing. How know? much <laughs> how much warning do you get that there's potentially going to be a good aurora borealis? Is it like you find out ten minutes before, an hour, a day, a week before? Um, this last one was actually a, a couple days before. Okay. Um, cool. just because of the, the, the way that, uh, you know, the space weather's monitored and then, you know, they'll say, Hey, you know, keep an eye out. You might get to see some of this, you know? Right. Um, okay. And that's a couple days, but then you, you got to continually monitor it because obviously it can dissipate. Got it. So you talked about a couple of different websites. We'll get the links from you and put those down in the show notes afterwards. So anybody who's watching this, uh, not live and wants to go to the websites that Jason's going to, we'll put those links down so you can get to those, to the NOAA site and everything else where you're, where you're getting this information. Okay. Sure. So now let's get into some technical details. First, let's just yep. talk hardware. What camera are you shooting with? And uh, yeah, just let's start with that. What camera and lens are you shooting with here? Okay. So funny enough, I use the same lens for, that we're going to show. Um, Sorry, say that a, again. See, every time I switch, it's, it c does cut through Skype. So yeah, um, I gotta love Skype. Gotta love Skype. So say it again. Sorry, you shoot shooting with what camera? Uh, it's a Nikon D six ten, and um, the lens is a Rokinon lens, actually. Okay. Um, that I'm that I uh, kind of fell in love with. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. So switch back to us now. Um, all right, so Nikon D610, nothing, uh, nothing huge, nothing massively special. It's just a run-of-the-mill, decent camera. Yeah, I mean, granted, of course, I'd like to get bigger, better, you know. But I mean, I started with a uh, my backup is a Nikon D3100, and that's I got my first Milky Way with that. Oh, right on. Okay, so now settings. What is this a very long? I mean, it has to be a fairly long exposure with the star fields like that. But uh, what's your exposure time on this? Uh, for the create for that one, yeah. um, actually, okay. So my exposure time was 13 seconds. Okay. Now, are you doing a, any kind of calculation on this in advance? Are you figuring out the math to do it, or are you just trial and erroring it? Try a five second, a 10 second, 15 second exposure, and, and change um, it from there. Well, to start with, when I when I first started doing some astro stuff, um, it is kind of play it by ear. I mean, you know, the the nice thing about having a monitor on your camera, it allows you to look and uh, unlike film um and so you know that's how i originally started because um you know you you, you want to kind of boost everything so you can try and set your scene get your focus all that kind of jazz but um after doing it long enough i've kind of got it somewhat figured out about what i need to approximately do okay. in terms of settings okay Fair so enough. But it starts out with trial and error, more yeah. or less, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And then how much post work? It's not composited, but uh, presumably you're shooting raw and then doing a little color enhancement, exposure enhancement in uh, in Lightroom or Photoshop or whatever you use. Are you doing, and this is a very b beautiful, bright, saturated image. How much of this is what you actually saw and how much of it is like, well, oh, let's just stick it up a little bit more? A good part of it's actually what I got. Um, now, right. if you're talking about with eyes, you know, what you saw with your eyes, I didn't see that much with my eyes. I mean, I did see it to where I was, 
I mean, I was hooting and hollering actually. I was like, whoa, because I mean, it was so cool to see it move and stuff. Oh, I mean, yeah. I'd never seen that. So I was kind of like freaking out. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, in terms of that shot, um, I did a little bit of post work. You know, I don't, I'm not a huge Photoshopper. Okay. Um, I don't like to really manipulate my image. Um, so I'll boost up my, you know, I play at the dynamic range. Okay. You know, um, boost up the shadows and, you know, I'll even bring down some of the blacks and bring up the whites and, you know, some um, basic exposure work, nothing. Yeah, super complex. basic. Ex yeah, nothing too crazy. No. OK. Um, it's just, I guess, the way I do it. Right on. Uh, and I use Lightroom mostly. OK. All right. Fair enough. Let me switch back to the picture real quick. I'll give people one more look at this one. And then we're going to flip over to the next shot, which is fairly similar, uh, but poses some other challenges. So this is shot during a forest fire. And I think you said this is the same location, right? This is also up at Crater Lake, uh, maybe with the lake behind you. Is that what you told me? Yeah, actually, it was at Crater Lake. Um, the lake was behind me at this in this shot. I actually got some people that were like, thought that I faked that shot because I said it was Crater Lake, and they're like, "The Milky Way's not there." I'm like, <laughs> "Okay, so obviously you're you're you're, you're a little confused." So, um, but so the lake was behind me. Got it. Um, but yeah, actually, um, that happened. Uh, it was about a year ago. Uh, I think was when I did that shot. Um, we were coming back from a three-day trip that we went around uh, uh, eastern Oregon and stuff and came back, back down central. Um, and we ended up there completely by luck, more okay. or less, because of other reasons. And so that shot, um, you know, I used, I ended up using the same lens, funny enough. Okay. Um, but that one took a little more tinkering of trying to even the exposure. Um, I didn't use any kind of, um, great, uh, gradient, like ND filter or nothing okay. to bring it down. I don't have one. So, um, <laughs> <That makes laughs> or else easy. I probably would have tried <laughs> that makes it. That's not an easy decision. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So rolled with it. Yeah. And, um, and uh, that one, I was able to, you know, use Lightroom and bring out the Milky Way a little bit more okay. uh, by, with a little bit of masking and then bring down the fire highlights and stuff just a little bit. Because, uh, as you know, if you bring out highlights down too much, it looks ugly. Right, right. You just get so. a flat area. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Right on. Beautiful. Very nice. And then the last one here that I've got up, let me switch over here first and then we'll switch to it on the computer. So now we're looking at a panorama. So I'm assuming that this is multiple photos stitched together and not just uh, just a big photo that's been cropped super wide. Is that an accurate guess? That would be accurate, yeah. And it is Crater Lake again. <laughs> so hey, why not? It's I, a beautiful I, place and it's nearby. It here. is. Hey, it's the deepest lake in the United States for anyone that didn't know that. Excellent. Um, but yeah, that's, I believe, I have to count it. I think that's about five shots. Um, and... Actually, the way I did that shot was, you know, I, I kind of figured out what my exposure was for my shots. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just click, turned, click, turn, click, turn, you know. Right. Uh, and just rotated on the tripod. And I just did it enough to where when Lightroom brings it in for a pano, you know, it has enough information to kind of piece it together sure. um, in a proper, you know, pano shot. Right, right. Absolutely. And then... Then I tinkered with it after that with the, with the highlights and the darks and the shadows and all that stuff. So I did the, that after the fact. Okay, fair enough. So the, let me pull it back up. The time of day of the shot, this looks like, <laughs> is it sunrise? No. No, that is sunset. Okay. Uh, no. No? <laughs> all right, tell me. All right, I give up. What, what, what is this? <laughs> that's about 1230 in the morning. Okay. So that's just the moon coming through there? Uh, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I give up. I'm going to stop that, asking questions. What the hell are we looking at here? <laughs> well, you know what? You and I will have to go and do some night shots sometime. Um, and I'll, I'll show you some neat little tricks on that. So um, the angle that I'm facing is more or less north. And north of Crater Lake, um, you got a couple cities like Chamolt and Lapine. But those are all small. Then you got Bend. And anyone's familiar with Bend, Oregon, it's grown quite a bit. So... Um, that's actually the light from Bend. No and, way. Yeah, and the and the city, you know, that's some city light in between, but most of that comes from Bend, actually. Oh my um, god. Yeah, uh, my son and I, we actually snowshoed to Discovery Point. Um, we went up to Crater, you know, just before midnight, and we snowshoed uh, all the way over there. To, I mean, I, I don't remember how far of walk that was, but nap on the snow, wow. so. <laughs> so, but yeah, no, that's how know. wild. Okay, well, that's uh, everything down to a complete minimum. Yeah, I'm not a no, no, absolutely. Fan of 
That's incredible. I think the city, I had no idea. I, I mean, I, I'm looking at that before going, okay, it's, you know, sunrise or sunset. It has to be, obviously, right? But it's got to be composited because the stars are there and you don't see the stars then. So well, now it makes more sense. That is the city. Damn. It's essentially one shot, but five shots, you know, put together for a panel. Right, right, but right. But the, the exposures are the same on every single shot. Okay. Fascinating. Well, thanks for uh, thanks for telling us that. That is very cool. Sure. And any anything unique there as far as the exposure, anything differently you had to think about um, when shooting that, or is it following the same basic guidelines you've you've been doing? Uh, well, it's along the same guidelines. Um, pretty much every you know, I try and have the aperture obviously open quite a bit. Uh, this this uh, sin lens that I have is phenomenal in my opinion, and you know it's not the best of the best you know type of thing, but sure. it's I found it to be. I love the color it produces and everything. Okay. Um, you know, and I shot that one around f2 to 2.5 because being a sin lens, you know, it's not. Right, right, right. You've got to step so, up, sure, yeah. Exactly. So, um, okay. you know, uh, that was a 2,500 ISO. And oh, so you're 20 shooting seconds. pretty high ISO then. Yeah. Why are you shooting higher ISO instead of going down to ISO 200 or 400 and just doing a longer exposure? Uh, then I can run it as star trails. Uh-huh. Even at twenty, even at twenty-four millimeters, um, you know, when you when you go past twenty millimeter or twenty seconds, and hit about twenty-five seconds, they say that you won't get too much star trail really, but if you push in on it, you know, you pixel peep it more or right. less, you're gonna see some star trail. Okay. Um, so I mean, if I had something wider, fourteen millimeter or something like that, then I obviously I can go to a longer exposure. Got it. But. Um, it, it, it's just I didn't want star trails for that. I actually did a star trail up at Crater Lake, and um, Nikon wasn't very happy with me about it. Um, it was a 45-minute exposure. <laughs> um, it was not a stacked, yeah. you know. I got this star trail going all the way across, and wow, it was like, cool. I thought I was only open for like 15 minutes, and no, time, I was doing something else. <laughs> time just went by. <laughs> so. How funny. So, okay, so the, the focal length obviously does determine how long you can be open when it comes Correct. to avoiding star trails, uh, if that's what you're trying to do. Is there, Unless you want them. Right, right. But assuming you're trying to avoid them like you were for these shots, is there yeah. a, a guideline of at certain focal length that has to be under a certain time? Or is there a chart that you go by? Or is it, again, just trial and error? I'm sure there's a chart. Um, I just kind of know the, the, the further I push in, the... the the greater the chance of star trails. However, right. there is an app that I do like to use. It's called Photo Pills. Oh yes, um, Photo Pills actually has a star trail um, uh, little module in there that you can, you know, say, okay, I'm shooting at this focal length, right. and then blah blah blah, and it will say, okay, you can go this far uh, in terms of. Uh, your exposure before you hit trails. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay, so anybody who's not familiar with photo pills, we actually interviewed them. We did a podcast with them just a, a few weeks ago, I think it was, maybe a month ago or so. We'll link to that up here, but that is part of the Photo Ops Expert podcast series, and it is a fantastic app. And it's funny, it turns out Sean Bagshaw, who I believe you know as well, is a f- outdoor nature photographer in this area, and he is a huge proponent of photo pills. He uses them all the time. It's, it's a, a great app. Yeah. It allows you to do a lot of cool planning and everything, even planning for, uh, you know, uh, star trails. And, or, I'm sorry, for um, like Milky Way right. and things like that. I, in fact, I used it when I did a uh, Holy Grail time lapse of Mount Shasta. Nice. So to define a Holy Grail time lapse, what does that mean? <laughs> it's time consuming. Uh, <laughs> if, you do it, if you do it the, if you do it the um, not automated ways. Um, Okay, so essentially a holy grail is, you know, you got you've seen the regular time lapses where, you know, the clouds are moving by or it's nighttime, you see the cars going by or whatever. Okay, okay so holy grail is uh, you go from like daytime to nighttime. Okay. Back back to daytime. Oh wow. And everything. I mean, that's a full holy grail and the exposure basically stays the same in terms of uh, to your eyes. Obviously it changes in the camera. Sure. But but I mean, I for the Holy Grail I did, I had to pretty much camp on my camera for about, t- t- what was it, 10, 11 hours. Wow. Um, and, I mean, at night, I was able to kind of, like, you know, take a break because, <laughs> I mean, my exposure, set, my settings didn't change. Right. But between right. sunset, sunrise, I'm having yeah, to yeah. sit there and manually change everything on the fly as it goes. Right, of course. Oh, that's crazy. So, okay. So is that, do you have that up on YouTube somewhere or somewhere where we can link to it so our audience can see it? Yeah, uh, it's on my YouTube channel. Okay, well, we will um, link to that right here, and we'll also put it down in the links uh, in the show notes down below. So 
Thank you. Make sure we, we get that from you after the show. Sure. Fantastic. All right. Um, that's This is great. Well, I think it's uh, we want to start talking about the eclipse. And also, there's a lot of chat going on. I see it out of the corner of my eye here. So I'm going to scroll through that and see what comments we've got that we want to bring up. But before okay. we do that, we're going to very quickly hop on over here and say thank you, a big old thank you, to Fidonet.com. So today's Photo Justice Photo Moment is brought to you by Fidonet.com. Whether you need a domain name, web hosting, or your own virtual server, Fidonet.com are the people to talk to. With access to more than 400 top-level domains, you're sure to find the right domain for your project. Or do you need to host a website? Fidonet.com are specialists in web hosting. With more than 20 years' experience serving websites, the folks at Fidonet.com will be able to help you get your website online in record time and at an affordable price. Fidonet.com, where those in the know go and those who use the code PHOTOJOSEPH on checkout save 10%. Awesome. All right. Well, let's uh, let's get back here. I'm going to take a look at the chat. I'm going to I'm not going to bring it up on screen so we can leave both of us on screen. So let me just sure. scroll through quickly. And by the way, anybody who's got questions, if you're watching live and you got questions for either of us, put at photo Joseph in front of the question. That way it'll highlight right on my screen and I'll see it. Uh, Jason isn't following the chat on his own, so don't try to chat to him. Uh, just chat it to me and I will read the question to him. So let's see here. We've got, uh, I saw some questions somewhere here and there where we've got to find the right spot. SRO Digital says, what are you going to do while out of the country, Mevo Eclipse? No, I'm, I'm not, I'm going to be in Sweden when the eclipse comes. I'm not going to even be in a part of the world where the eclipse happens at all. I'm completely 100% missing it. Such a doofus. Ay, 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 ay. What are you going to do? All right. I've been planning for like a year. Yeah, I'm sure. Well, I didn't even, okay, this is how <laughs> bad, this is how dumb this was for me. Not, I didn't know about it at all. And it was maybe a, probably two months ago, I was speaking at some event and we're having dinner before the before the event. And someone started talking about the eclipse and a few people, oh yeah, what are you doing for that? What are you doing? And I'm going, what eclipse? And everybody looked at me like, are you an idiot? I go, apparently. And then they told me what it was. I looked at the calendar and go, oh good, I'll be out of the country. Perfect. And I thought, maybe I'll be in an even better place to see the eclipse. Look at the map. No, no, far from it. Uh, don't, don't worry too bad. In 2023, there'll be one that goes right over us. Right over us in 2023. Yeah, it's not a total. It's a it's an annular eclipse. Okay. But it still goes over us and it touches part of Medford. Oh wow! No kidding. So the, <laughs> the the totality area. Oh wow! Well, that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. All right. Um, all right. Well, a lot of the questions are about the eclipse that are coming up. So let's just let's just move into the eclipse talk and then we'll save some of these questions for afterwards. And again, folks, if you have questions for either of us, mainly for Jason here. Put it into the comments, put it in the chat, but put at photo Joseph in front of it so that I know um, so that I know that it's there. All right, so let's start talking about the clips. First of all, when the heck is this thing? The 21st. 21st of August of 2017. Yes. Yep. What time? Not too far from now. What, what time? Well, it depends on where you are. <laughs> right, okay, so you, we're in Oregon. Where are you actually going to shoot it? Uh, I'm gonna actually be in Culver. Um, my uncle has a, uh, a house right there, which is great. Um, which is just, I mean, just south of uh, Madras, and Madras is, I mean, they're, it's going to be ridiculous. <laughs> I, mean, I, I talked to an OSP friend of mine, and he's like, just watch out, because there's going to be a lot of crazies. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, there's so, definitely be a lot of crazies. Um, I, originally, I originally planned to actually be at the uh, Painted Hills. Okay. Um, I mean, I planned that like a year ago, because I found out that the eclipse is literally going, I'm mean, like, the, the heart of the um, totality is going to be right over the Painted Hills. Wow. However, it turns out that they are closing the Painted Hills to vehicle traffic. So if you want to actually get to a nice position where you can get, say, like the Eclipse with part of the Painted Hills all in the same shot, which was part of my plan, um, that just went. Um, so yeah. Uh, the reason, more or less, is because you're going to have to hike in. And you're talking like about a three-mile hike, you know, uphill mostly, out in like desert more or less high desert so you're talking of the average is going to be about 100 degrees there's going to be no facilities right i mean i'm sorry it's going to be a cool shot but i'm not i'm not in the best shape so i'm not going <laughs> to die for it i'm sorry <laughs> you know? fair enough okay so so you're going to your uncle's house that's that's great yeah um yeah ironically my dad's house is in the path of the totality in south carolina and uh, oh, he's wow. having a big party around it, but you know, I wasn't clever enough to plan a trip out there at that time. So, oh well, what are you going to do? Yeah, right. <laughs> no, not quite. Uh, okay, so so that's where you're going. Where you're going to be? What time of day is it going to hit? And how much of a window are you going to have? Uh, I haven't done all the calculation yet because the 
the change to my uncle's house just recently happened. Okay. And so um, I've been trying to figure out some of the other technicals for that part. Um, I should get about half the time of totality. Uh, right at Painted Hills, I was getting about two and a half minutes of totality. Okay. Um, and this will be about a min- minute 45 or so. Okay. And just, um, which is make... awesome. That's, that's a lot. That's a lot of frames to capture. That is. Yeah, you can you shoot know? a lot in a minute 45. Yeah. So just to clarify as well, can you define what totality means for anyone who's not familiar with that? Okay, so I'm sure everyone has seen like the the maps and everything, and you got the you got the one line with the center line, and then you got it even out further. So what happens is if you're in the totality path, when the sun comes over the moon, I can't really like do this very well. So, um, so when the the sun you know or the moon obviously goes in front of the sun, uh, it will cover it entirely. Okay. Um, there will be no more yellow disc, and that's where you see all the like uh, the little fire and the, you know the uh, ring of fire, all those different things, all the nifty little tricks like the diamond okay. ring um, is one of the, is one of the things that happens. Um, shadow bands, stuff like that. But um, if you're outside that, I mean, you're still going to see things happen. Okay. If you're outside that line, you'll still see things happen, and obviously, depending on how close you are. Uh, is the percentage you'll you'll see okay um and you're like well you won't be here so um <laughs> so you'll see zero um, <laughs> Run it in. Run it in. <laughs> okay so so you're gonna have a minute 45 to capture this what give or take give or take yeah. sure uh what what images are you specifically trying to capture what do you have in mind of this is the kind of image that i want to create or images that i want to create when i got that one minute and 45 or so seconds well, a lot of things changed in my plans. Uh, like I said, I was planning on renting another camera, and I'm taking all the gear that I have. So I'm taking my Sony FS100. Um, I want to do video on that. Okay. Uh, because the whole eclipse itself, if, if you want the whole eclipse, you're talking not just a couple of minutes. You're talking, you know, a couple hours. Okay. Because you got the start of totality, uh, or not the start of totality, but the start of the eclipse as the sun, or I'm sorry, as the moon is starting to, Cross that path, mm-hmm. so you got that time frame in between. Sure. Um, obviously, everyone's freaking out for the totality. Sure. I mean, right, that's course. obviously going to be the big deal because that's where you're going to see everything really cool happen. Right. And at that point, I'm more or less, uh, you know, I'll, I'll have a couple cameras running just to get what I can. Okay. Um, and then I'll have my my Nikon with my 500 millimeter on it. Uh, 500. Okay. I, yeah, I'm going to use a 500 millimeter, um, and uh, it's nothing like amazing in terms of, of lens, but it, it's pretty sharp. Um, so and, what what special gear considerations do you need to use for uh, this? Are any specific filters, neutral density yeah. filters, uh, anything other than that? You can probably get, you, you can get away with it depending on your new, uh, your ND filter, like if it's strong enough. Um, you know, but you don't want to really take a chance. I mean, if you want more details of the sun, you're going to want a filter. Okay. You know, an actual solar filter. So what is a um, solar filter? It's about like a, what, what is it, ND5 is and what it comes in at. Is it any different than an ND filter? Is there something else about it? It's just, it's super, super dark. I mean, think of it more like welding goggles. Oh, wow. Okay. You know, where, where you can't see nothing, um, but, you know, you can see the brightness of, say, the welding right. um, type of thing. It's essentially that's what you're using. Okay. So for lack of better words, photography grade welding glass. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean they have it in different different types of stuff. I mean you can get film like polymer film, mm-hmm. which is what I'll be using because I can't afford the actual glass filters. Sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, they can be pretty spendy, can't they? I mean, good ND filters oh, yeah. can get very expensive. What, oh yeah. What would a good proper glass filter cost for the solar filters? Uh, two fifty. Okay. Three fifty. Yeah. On the, on what you got, the brand that you got. Sure. Like that. Yeah, and, I would imagine. Uh, I would imagine if rental houses had any of these, they were claimed long, long ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You go and look at anything. They're like out of stock, out of stock, out of stock. Sure. Absolutely. Like, yeah, that figures. <laughs> okay. So then with this super, super dark ND filter on there, what type of exposure times are you looking at for a shot of the sun? Uh, well, it does depend on on how dark you are. Um, but, I mean, you can you can go down to, you know, average shooting range is more or less you don't have to go anything you know one four thousandth or anything like that okay you know you can actually tinker with a little bit of long exposure 
uh, if you do it right by you know changing your aperture and your ISO and things, you know, it all still falls into the triangle. So, um, you know, if you want to p- try and get a little bit more of the, I don't, I'm being weird, um, a little more of the, you know, like drifting of the so of the flares and sure. things like that, you could try and slow down your shutter speed by kicking up your yeah, yeah. your f stop and things like that. So, okay. but it, it it brings it way closer, like down to earth. So it's so more like okay. So it's more like just r- normal photography. It's just yeah. that you're pointing at a super super bright subject. And so once w- when the moon's completely covered, when we're in that totality, uh, obviously the primary source of brightness, the sun itself, is now blocked, and we see coronas, we see flares, we see all kinds of stuff happening around it. And I guess if I understand it right, and tell me if I'm wrong here, the idea is that we'll see what's always there. It's just that now that the moon is blocking out the biggest bright spot, suddenly our eyes slash the camera with the aid of of these filters or glasses if you're looking at it with your eyes will allow you to now see that stuff that's around there that normally we just are just invisible to us because it's completely blown out right but now see here's the thing when it comes down to if you're in totality like full and I, i mean i wouldn't do this if you're down to like a couple you know seconds of totality if you're really that far outside but if you're you know a minute in you can take your glasses off oh really yeah, you don't need your glasses. You don't need a filter on your camera, or anything, because all you have is this outside light. You're it's, not getting the actual. You're not getting the straight on beam. Interesting. Well, just just for word. safety's sake, um, <laughs> and uh, and covering in a little CYA here. Anyone viewing, do not take off your glasses unless you are advised by something like the NASA website to do so. Because I don't know anything about this, and they do I, say that. They do say that. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Just... They, they actually say that <laughs> during totality, you can actually remove your glasses. You can't. Okay. But you know, you got to pay attention to that time because if you're sitting there staring at it, <laughs> right? You know, and all of a sudden it comes loose, uh, it's going to hurt. Yeah. You yeah. know, it does not take long to get solar blindness. You know, so you can't mess around. Right. You know, if you need to pop them off for a second to go, oh, you know, and then put them back on. <laughs> You know, I mean, because that's what I'll be doing. Yeah. Of course, you know. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Take that chance. <laughs> so so but, you're, you're going to shoot video and stills. Uh, yep. Are you, you've got a plan. series of filters for both cameras so you can simultaneously shoot them? I'm going to tinker with a little bit. Um, okay. I, I did, I do have some, um, some uh, solar sheets on the way so okay. I can kind of make my own little custom. Got it. Uh, filter for it and everything so and you can do that pretty cheap i mean <laughs> it's just a matter of not whether it's going to arrive in time um <laughs> or else i'll have to probably get more creative yeah i was i was the reason i'm not 100 percent prepared is because things changed right. on the original plan yeah and so now i'm having to make up for that got it got it next Turn time it. I'll, I'll i'll plan like three different scenarios okay. <laughs> just in case yeah um, all right, so let's let's hit some questions. There's actually not sure. a whole lot of questions coming in, but APN TV is asking specifically any advice for shooting video of the eclipse. Since you're talking about that, is there anything different than shooting photography? You're still going to shoot with standard, just like you normally would shoot video. You're just going to put a filter on it and off you more, go. More or less, yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, I mean you can still shoot regular video and everything, but what you're going to run into is if you're going to do video of like as the eclipse is happening and into totality. That's when you're going to have to, you know, I mean, you're probably going to have to mess with it and post a little bit, but right. you're going to want to pull that filter off, you know, um, or else when totality happens, everything's going to get it's really gonna dark. It's going to be super dark. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So. And of course, if uh, you're shooting video and you're trying to get in tight, the sun, well, we are moving. So the sun is, you know, you're going gonna to have to follow it. Yeah. The sky, so you're going to have to follow it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, yeah, if, you're, if you're really, if you're in really tight. Yeah. Um, you know, some of the different apps that you can use, uh, like PhotoPills, for example, um, you can actually track where the sun is going. So if you are, um, if you use the planner that's in, in PhotoPills and you know where you're going to be, you can actually pop in, you know, your coordinates and mm-hmm. drop it on the map. And then you can actually bring up the sun of where it's going to be at that point. Okay. And you can use the, um, you can use the augmented reality. To try and you know kind of figure out what you need to track, and if you don't want to play with having to move your camera, you can sure. try and adjust your focal length um, to where you'll still capture the whole thing in the in the time frame. Okay. By using that. 
Okay. It's net the tools in there. Yeah. Oh, no, there really are. Um, Joshua's asking, can we get away with cranking down on the exposure? So basically saying if you were to go you know, F22, ISO 100, uh, eight thousandths of a second, are, can you do that and capture without using a filter or is that even that's too bright? You're going to have to have a filter. And at, at this point, I assume we're talking not at the totality because we don't need the filter for the totality. Right. Um, yes and no. Uh, it depends on the detail that you really want. You know, they say that it can hurt your sensor. Well, that was the, the second part that. of his question is, can it hurt the sensor? It's, it, it is said that it can hurt the sensor. Um, I mean, you got to also think if you're out taking photos, of, you know, senior photos or something of somebody or just a landscape with the sun in it, you're still getting direct light right onto that right. sensor still. Right. Granted, it's not as concentrated <laughs> if you're if, unless you're, you know, pushed in on it. Right. So I would say, yes, it probably could still actually damage the sensor. I haven't had any trouble. Okay. So far, I haven't had any trouble. However, um, this kind of brought, when I was talking to you earlier, Joseph, uh, about a photo that I took. Um, oh, we, no, we dropped for a, for a second. second. Say it again. So tell okay. me about a photo that you took. Yeah, um, I used actually my D3100 because my 610 was in for service. And um, at 500 millimeters, so crop sensor, you know, do the math on that. I was pushed in about what, 750? Um, and I was cranked at 1 4,000th, which is as high as that goes. I was uh, down to ISO 100. And that lens actually let me, get, I was at F40. 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 <laughs> F40. And uh, that was, yeah. Um, and there was actually some cloud cover uh, and everything. So that helped too. Okay. So I did manage to catch a sunspot. Okay. Um, a, a good size sunspot on there um, by doing that. However, everything else is still kind of blown out. Yeah. So, you, you really know, unless you have a lot of diffusion in the sky, you know, which we could run into here in Oregon because all the stinking fires going on right now. Oh, that's right. Um, yeah. yeah, that could make it lovely. Um, so, um, uh, I guess we'll just see. Yeah. But Nothing unless you have that. all that kind of diffusion and everything, you really, really, really want to. Uh, and now, like I said, that one shot, that was actually without any filters on. Okay. Because um, I don't have a filter big enough for that lens. Sure. Um, so if you throw some NDs on there, obviously you're going to have a little more leeway. Right. But if you really want like those shots that you see of the sun and a whole bunch of sunspots or what have you, you're going to want to use a filter just to be sure. Got it. Fair enough. Fair enough. And, and to be safe, for sure. Marvin is asking, Marvin PA, the paranoid Android, is asking, does Jason do moonshots? I know, right? <laughs> does do you do moonshots? And if so, any tips on how to? So any any advice for photographing the moon? I have done the moon. Um, in fact, we, we a couple years ago, we had the blood moon um, right. that, was, that was here. And that was kind of neat. Um, I mean, not as spectacular as I was expecting, but, you know, I mean, I get my hopes up pretty high. So. <laughs> um, but... I mean, you're, you're, you don't have to worry about filters or anything like that, you know. Um, obviously, you want to probably crank up your f-stop just a little bit, uh, so you know the folk, uh, your uh, your depth of field and everything. And now, granted, I know the depth of field is a long way, but obviously, it just makes it that much sharper. Sure. Uh, a little bit there, so but you don't want to like, you know, crank all the way through. So, um, I'd still use a tripod for sure, uh, and everything, and. But you can still run fairly high shutter speeds mm -hmm. uh, and everything like that because, I mean, you're, you're, you're shooting reflected sunlight. Right. And so, that, I remember advice that I heard you know, back when I was learning photography is when you're mm -hmm. shooting the moon, you are basically shooting full daylight. It's just like you're shooting full daylight here. It's just that that full daylight is very far away. But it's still it's still the same rules of exposure for here. It's, uh, it, it's you know, you got full light, full sunlight blasting onto that moon surface. Yeah, more or less. For. Yeah, I mean, even even your light meter on your camera can actually help you in that situation. Um, for like, say, like the Aurora shots and the Milky Way, don't use your light meter; it's right. not going to matter. It's not you know, it'll you. always say you're underexposed right. and because it, it has no clue. Um, <laughs> but you know, for the uh, for the moon, though, I mean, yeah, you can pick up on that. And right. in my opinion, I I like to shoot a little darker than anything else because you know, with the dynamic range, you can always bring back some of those shadows. Um, and things like that. But if you blow out those highlights, you're you're screwed. There's yeah. no bringing that back. There's no bringing them back. So um, I always shoot a little darker. Uh, but right. I'll, I'll shoot the moon easily at like one two fiftieth, even one five hundredth. Okay. 
no yeah. problem. Yeah, sounds sounds you know. about right. Uh, Marvin had asked earlier, sorry, Marvin, I missed this. Uh, could you use the Panasonic app to do all the changes? And he's talking about the exposure changes. Yeah, absolutely. If you are tethered wirelessly to your iPhone app with your Panasonic, your Lumix camera, or any camera that supports uh, wireless control, then yeah, you can do those basic exposure changes. Uh, one of the big challenges if you're trying to do any kind of time lapse and, and change the exposure as you go is getting a smooth exposure change. That's <clears throat> that's where you often get into requiring external hardware to really control it and do bulb ramping, um, as it's called. So instead of just going from a 30th to a 60th of a second, the the camera is technically operating in bulb mode and you have an app on your phone or some other hardware that controls the exposure and it opens and closes it and it changes that by a much smaller fraction of a second so that every exposure changes much less and you get a smoother transition. So that's a whole other... That would other, be lovely. Yeah, that's a whole other adventure. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's, that's definitely different. My The Holy Grail that I did, I did it all manual. So... I was physically changing the settings on, you know. Wow. Well, I look forward to seeing that. I mean, I weighed down my tripod and I tightened everything really tight. Yeah. But I manually changed every little setting wow. throughout the whole thing. ISO. Wow. You know, I can't wait shutter, to see it. Name it. I, well, I can't wait to see it. So, again, folks, we'll, we'll make sure we link to that down below. If you click the eye up in the corner here, you'll be able to check that out as well. Um, Trevor had asked earlier, sorry, Trevor, I missed this earlier. Uh, curious whether, and I'm not sure I understand the question, but curious whether the Borealis shot followed the rule of 500 for exposure. I don't know that I know what the rule of 500 is. Well, there's two different rules. There's a, okay. uh, you'll, you'll see it in the PhotoPills app, rule 500 and oh, rule okay. of 600. Okay. Um, so I honestly this? don't remember the definite, the, the real definitions between them, but, um, for the shot itself, I mean, it still all follows, um, because it's, you're going based on your, your, so, so what is the triangle. rule of 500? I'm not familiar with this. Um, you know, I can't recall like the be a, a good definition of it. Okay, really. All right, no worries. Um, it, it, it's part. If I remember right, it, it's partially part of the uh, star trails situations. Okay, well, let me just I'll just Google it real quick. To achieve points of light, you can use a simple rule that's often called the 500 rule. For example, let's say you're taking a shot with a 24 millimeter lens on a full frame camera. 500 divided by 24 equals 21 seconds, which you can round down to 20 seconds. Okay, so yeah. that's to avoid star, star trails. trails. Got it. So That's 500 it <laughs> divided by your focal length, your right. full frame equivalent focal length. So if you're shooting micro four thirds with a 50 millimeter lens, that's a 100. So it'd be 500 divided by 100. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Um, and I mean, it, it, so there, there are two, there's the 500 and uh, the 600. Okay. The 500 is usually the best one to work with though. Okay. Good to know. But get the app. The app is yeah, you'll find you'll find it to be a lot more beneficial. Yeah, the, the app, <laughs> that stuff. PhotoPills app is phenomenal. I mean, I, it's worth it. Yeah, it's worth it. Yeah, definitely. It's if you want to plan any of this, it really does help you. And also, uh, you know, it's not just for star photography, sunset, sunrise, anything you want to oh, yeah. plan. And the whole idea of being the PhotoPills app, just just a quick little sidebar here, is it is there to plan a shot. So if you say I want to get a photograph. Let's say you're, you walk into some situation, oh my God, this would be an incredible shot if the sun was right there or the moon was right there. You can pull out the PhotoPills app and find out if and when the sun will be there. So it might tell you that in three and a half months or in the middle of October at on the 4th at 3 p.m., at, this is where the sun's gonna be. Perfect, so you know that you gotta come back at that time and place for that shot. Or you can even do it remotely. You can look it up and drop the pin on the map where you wanna be. You go, okay, I know that I wanna be here to get a shot with the sun coming from that direction. You see on the map where the sun will be, where it arcs through, it's it's incredible. It's a lot of good oh, yeah. math in that app. Oh yeah, saves a lot of headache. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Okay, great. Um, let's see here, anything else? Uh, oh, Marvin's asking is that smooth change we're talking about where you'd want the Mark II lens. Okay, so what he's talking about is on the newer Lumix lenses, the newer Panasonic lenses for the Lumix cameras there is a smooth iris control. So if you're shooting video and you're in, and it only applies to video, Marvin, if you're shooting video and you are in shutter priority mode and the camera is moving the aperture for you, it will not stop between two, eight, four, five, six. It actually smoothly graduates through. So you get a smooth iris control when you're shooting video. Uh, but if you're shooting stills, then that's not gonna help you there because it does not apply to still photography. That's just for video. So in that case, no. You would still, what you really want is an app that controls the phone and allows you to, uh, controls the camera and allows you to do bulb ramping. That's what it comes down to for really good quality time lapse that runs through major exposure changes. Um, bulb ramping is the way to go. Agreed, Jason? Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, or do it by hand like you've chapped it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 you can do it by hand too. 
Uh, in fact, actually, funny enough, that Holy Grail was my first actual time lapse. And, and you're happy with it? It came out really good? Oh, yeah. It's got like uh, almost 9,000 views, nice. um, like 100 and some odd thumbs up and zero thumb down. Hey. So that's hey, pretty I, cool. That's would, unheard of. I'd love to have a video with zero thumbs down. People always find a reason to go <laughs> on my videos. Speaking of, folks, if you're watching this live or not live, do us a favor. Jam that thumbs up button. Let's do that. If you got to hit the thumbs down, you can. But, you know, tell us why. Be constructive. A little constructive criticism goes a long way. Um, all right. Well, that is, I think that's everything we were going to talk about today. Is there anything else you want to throw out there as far as, uh, as far as tips or advice for anyone who's planning to shoot the Eclipse? Uh, for shooting Eclipse, make sure you get some, some filter, you yeah. know, filter. Uh, unless, unless you are planning on just doing totality and that's it, then you can probably get away, with, you know, just have an ND or two just in case. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, if I'm in there for a minute and a half, that's actually quite a bit, a lot of time. I yeah. can actually switch. If I'm, if I'm ready, I can, I can switch stuff out real fast. Right. Um, you know, but ha have some filter. Don't mess around. Make sure your eyes are protected. Yeah. You know, um, don't like, uh, say put the glass, you know, if you have like solar glasses, don't put that in front of the viewfinder and have the lens exposed. You want the lens covered. You want the lens covered. Yeah, um, of course. Yeah. Because I mean, uh, you could take your shot and it, you're not going to get what you just saw, <laughs> you know. Don't put on the glasses, look through the camera, and think that you're going to get the shot. No, that's exactly. Not how it works. It's not going to work that way. <laughs> well, could you take your glasses, put them in front of the camera? It might be a cheap poor man's uh, filter. It, in there. It's it's a poor man's filter. Yeah, you sure could. You I can. mean, it, you know, if your glasses are big enough, yeah, you sure yeah. could actually. But you can do um, that just even with your iPhone. Just hold the glasses up and shoot through the iPhone. It might work. Yeah, I'll bet. Yeah. I, I'm sure we're going to see photos like that showing up. Uh, showing oh, up the, you know, it's funny. Is the, uh, a friend of mine isn't going to capture the eclipse he doesn't want to deal with the traffic and everything like that and he's like why should i bother you know going and getting the same photo that million right yeah and you know what i i see that i do see that but it's not my photo yeah you know yeah. my photo is my photo and plus i just want to see it i think it's going to be pretty cool oh, of i mean course. i may not be here you know i yeah, may yeah. not be able to ever travel for you never to see another one so. right Right. You know, I well, want to see enough. it. Well, fair <laughs> so. enough. I think that, that in itself is good advice. Even if you have no intent of shooting it, you don't care about shooting it, you just, and you're anywhere near it, go see it. And and I think being in the totality, that's a huge difference, right? Get Because we are where we yeah. are in Oregon. We're at like 95 or 90%, something like that. And it's just, maybe it's not even that high, but it's just, it's not the same. It is not the same. Well, I, yeah, down at this part, um, I think the coverage is about 95 percent right okay uh, but i mean you're, you're talking kind of like going into sunset and coming out you know in totality you're not going to just see that like you're going to see what it's really hard to capture it's also called shadow bands um it's described as snakes like shadowy snakes um on the ground you know there's or oh. or on, on something you know on oh. the walls some white a very very light area you'll see all this movement and what that actually is is it's sunlight peering over the hills and valleys and mountains of the moon that is basically casting on the earth and wow. because of of you know what you know, you, uh i forget what you call it but when you take a picture of you know um when you have uh, heat waves in between mm -hmm. and so you get some of that motion yeah, yeah, that's get, what yeah. that's yeah that's what and so instead of a sharp shadow or anything like that right how cool movement huh and everything is because of the heat and that stuff between. you're only going to see in the totality you're not going to see yes. that if you're outside of that yeah you. if you are anywhere near i guess that's final advice for you folks if you are anywhere near it just go just yeah. it's going to be a pain there's going to be traffic this part of it's going to suck but it's just it's a it could be a once in a lifetime experience sure it's going to be happening again in what'd you say 2023 20, 24 2023, there'll be 2023. one that goes over southern part of Oregon, but it's an annular. So right. an an annular, if you if you don't know the difference, you know totality it it totally obscures the sun. An annular, you'll actually get like the uh, golden ring. Oh, okay. That goes around it. So um, if the moon is just closer to us than it will be this month, and so it appears the moon right. appears smaller. Is that the general? Right, right. So you'll actually get a golden ring of the sun, and it's still a, a, an eclipse, but it's not a. You won't get like all the, um, 
all the flares out and stuff okay. like that that you see mm -hmm. uh, that you would with the totality. Uh, mm -hmm. You also won't get the diamond ring effect. That's another thing that you get with totality is the diamond ring effect. Oh, and what you is know, the diamond ring effect? ring effect? Well, you know, when you see the, uh, the commercials, you see a, a, you know, a diamond ring and the light goes across and you get this like, nice little burst of light. That happens at the start and end of totality. Wow. Uh, on the sun, you'll get this little burst uh, that you can capture, and it only lasts seconds. So, okay. Huh. Yeah, you got you got to be on it. <laughs> wow, oh, I can't wait to see what I'm missing. <laughs> I still can't believe I'm going to miss this. Oh well, what are you going to do? Well, you know, hey, if you travel a lot, you'll be able to see some uh, down in like South America. I think there's actually a few total eclipses that are coming up. Okay. Down that way. All right. Well, maybe it's time to. Uh, I've never been to South America. Maybe it's time to start planning that trip. Who knows? Who <laughs> knows? All right. Good, Jason. Thank you again very much for coming on. I really do appreciate it. This has been fun. Thanks. Um, let's see if there's any Hope last... everyone enjoyed. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see if there's any last question. Oh, <laughs> Joshua says another useful tip I used at another eclipse. If you have any, I don't know who has these anymore. The old floppy disks are about the right density density to shoot an eclipse through. I have some, <laughs> but I'm an IT nerd, so <laughs> there you go. A floppy That's disk. clever. I never no thought kidding. of that. I have to. Uh, I'll have to tinker with that. Wow. Interesting idea. Okay. Well, there you go. We'll have to check that out. All right. Thanks again for coming on. I do appreciate it, and uh, I will get those links from you. And good luck. I can't wait to see see what you got. You have to message me, text me some pictures. I'll be in in Europe, but you can text me some pictures, and I can go. Oh man, I can't believe I missed this. Well, then you get to you know send me pictures of Europe, and I get to go because <laughs> I've never been there. <laughs> Fair <laughs> so, enough. No, thanks a lot, man. Uh, and uh, I hope everyone uh, enjoyed and has a good time uh, with the eclipse, and hopefully you guys learned some cool stuff. Absolutely. All right. Thank you, sir. Take care. Talk Have to a you good later. day. All right. Bye. -bye. Bye. All right, folks, thanks again for, uh, for tuning in for that. That was a lot of fun. Um, hopefully you learned something. I know I learned a few things here, and it's fantastic to know just – how much can go into this and, and what the results finally can be. It's going to be really exciting to see these, these pictures coming out of it from everybody all over the area. I'm, I know obviously Instagram is just going to be flooded with photos about the eclipse of the eclipse and everything going on around it. I'm sure there's going to be some big parties and all kinds of crazy hoopla going on. So, so uh, a big thanks again to Jason for coming in and telling us all about it. Uh, we are, let's see, we've been going for a while here. Um, I think we're going to skip the, the commentary session of the show today. We're just going to go ahead and wrap this thing up and move on with our days and let you guys move on with yours. Uh, I didn't see any other questions coming in that we need to address. So if you have any thoughts that you do want to, to get answered, any questions you want to get answered, just pop them into the comments down below once the regular video is, is uh, live on there and you can we'll, we'll try to get to them there for you. And I'll ask Jason to come in if you have questions about the eclipse itself. I'll see if he can come in and answer those questions for you or, of course, about his photography. Um, that is about that. Let's see here. Let me wrap up here real quick. Let me bring up my other screen. And yeah, let's do this one more time here. We're just going to do a quick other another shout out to Fidonet.com. Whether you need a domain name, web hosting, or your own virtual server, Fidonet.com are the people to talk to. And to save 10%, be sure to use the code PHOTOJOSEPH on checkout. So thank you once again, Fidonet.com, for supporting our little show here. It is awesome to have you on. Uh, anything else? Let's see. What else we got going on? podcast. Let's talk about this real quick. We talked about the Photo Pills podcast. This is the latest episode. If you haven't seen this, do check out the podcast Photo Apps. Podcast is the name. Go to photoapps.expert. Click on the podcast button or just look for it here on YouTube or of course you can subscribe to it in iTunes as well. And the last episode, the most recent episode is Backblaze. It's all about backup and that is, needless to say, a very, very important thing to do. And of course, if you haven't checked this out yet, do go to photojoseph.com slash workshops where you can learn all about our upcoming trip to Oaxaca, Mexico, which, believe me, is a cool place to go. You're going to want to do that if you can. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. We'll get some nice pictures, eat some good food, drink a little mezcal. It's going to be a good time. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. We'll see you uh, oh, tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday. Normally, it would be kind of Mevo slash Spark slash Out of the Studio Friday. However, as I've mentioned, I'm going to be out of town for a couple weeks. So tomorrow's show is, assuming I can get it all together, is just going to be about the gear that I'm going to be bringing on the show, uh, on the on the road. If it isn't, then we'll do that on Monday because I am going to come in Monday morning to do another show then. So we might talk about it then. Uh, so, you know, tomorrow's a, uh, it's a, it's a curveball. We have no idea what it's going to be, but it'll be something fun, I'm sure. Take care of yourselves. See you next time. Bye-bye.